Hey everybody, it's Lisa with QITV Quilting in the Valley. We're at episode two now. We're gonna feature Monique Jacobs from Open Gate Quilts this week, as well as a couple tutorials on a couple of different things. We're gonna talk about some threads. Last week we talked about needles, today we're gonna to talk about threads and then another tool presentation. So, welcome, glad you could join us, and let's get started. are here with Monique Jacobs of Open Gate Quilts and Monique designs rulers and patterns and fabric and all kinds of stuff and it just occurred to me that most of y'all have probably no idea how a line of fabric turns from a little germ of an idea in Monique's head to this in your quilt shop and Monique today is going to tell us how that happens. Well thank you for having me I'm so excited to be here there is a process of doing fabric and we talked about it's going to take it takes a, a long time but i want to give you a brief little bit on how we put it the fabric together so the first thing that i do when i'm designing fabric is i need to do a color palette so let me show you on the computer how i start doing it okay So the first thing that I always do is I always pick a color palette. Mm -hmm. I get my inspiration through Pinterest, mm -hmm. other fabric, um, something that the colors speak to me. So this particular one here is something that I thought this would be a beautiful quilt palette. Mm -hmm. And then what I do with this color palette, and it's really nice to have these here because then you know specifically these are actually the colors that I'm going to use. Okay. And this particular picture, there's a lot of different colors in here. So I can pull all of these out. And when I pull them out, I get my color palette already here. And that way, I don't have to worry about this anymore. I have my color palette ready. So once I have my color palette picked and ready, then what I'll do is I'm going to make, I'm going to start with me, maybe I want to make a flower. So I'm going to draw, a, first I'm going to draw a petal and I just use the oval tool. Mm -hmm. This here has my, um, my stroke color and then my inside. So the outside and then the inside. If I don't want anything on the outside, I just get rid of it. Okay. Once I have this done, I think, okay, that would be okay flower, but I want my petals to be a little different. So I can change that. I can make this more pointy, which I'm gonna do here. I can also make this a little longer, pull that down, maybe make this a little less pointy, and then I got a really pretty petal now. So once I have my petal done, then I can actually rotate that and make several copies of, of it yep mm -hmm. so i'm going to just do that and then i'll get here and then once i get this then i'm going to do it 60 degrees and then i get my next petal and i'm going to put it here and i just keep copying them and rotating okay. i actually have one already made so let me grab Look at you that being ahead of time. <laughs> So we have one made. I'm just gonna get rid of that because we're not gonna need that one. So most people looking at this are gonna go, oh my goodness, there's no way I could do that. So how long did it take you to figure this out? Actually, I took classes. I took online classes sure. to figure it out. Um, one of the things that I find is when you're in, in college or in school, you're like, you're learning things that you're not as excited about. This is something I'm excited about. So I was excited sure. to learn. So I took classes online. Um, I tried, I went to YouTube. YouTube's also fun. <laughs> you got a lot of cool things on YouTube, how to do all this. And really, it's not that difficult. The tools in Adobe Illustrator are amazing. You can do lines, you can, it even, if you do a line, it will do a line and it, if you don't want it to be jagged, because it takes a while to figure out how to see if I do a jagged line like that. Uh -huh. Here, I'm gonna make sure I got that colored so you can see. Put a little bit of stroke in there. 
So see how when I drew it, it was really jagged. Mm -hmm. I can make it so it's as smooth as I want. See nice. how nice and smooth that mm -hmm. is? So you can do that. You can also, they have tools where you can make it where the ends are um, smaller. You okay. can do this kind of thing. There's so many things. The leaves, easy, just like this. I just mm -hmm. did two pointy ends. Sure. Super easy. So basically, it just took me time to playing around with it. The biggest thing is get your inspiration colors, start playing with it, see what you like. If you like a print, look at it, see what you can pull out of it, and play with it. You don't want to use the exact same thing, but you could get the idea and your start working. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Once I have all my drawings done, the next thing I'm going to do is I need to put it into Photoshop so I have a background. So I just do really easy. I just grab the whole thing and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go into my Photoshop. And I already have my background already made. And I have my flower. Okay. And then this is what a finished product would be. So I would have to have you know, all the extra pieces, but that's how you start. And you, you start just repeat with them wherever yep. it feels right until yep. you get the scale that you like. Yep. So now you have your final design in here. How does it get from here to here? Well, once I have all my designs figured, I have the colors, all the prints done, then I will send it to my manufacturer, which is Maywood Studio, mm -hmm. and they will put it in their CAD program. And then they send, once that's all done, they send it to the company to print it. So CAD program. CAD being computer aided design. Yes. So yes. they've got that and now they're doing their thing. They're doing their thing. They send it to the company. Once it's printed, they just do a small amount because we really want just a little bit to make sure all the colors go together. Right. Because printing is an art as well. They sure. want to make sure that the colors are the same, that everything goes together, that nothing's off. We get a little strike off is what they're called. We look at those, figure that out. Once that's figured out, then they order the fabric. It comes in and a year later, we have fabric. Just a year? Just a year, just a mere year. <laughs> mere year. <laughs> so so they're really, they're, they're kind of taking a gamble on it when they order this fabric yes. so far in advance and they're just, you know, they have to just, I guess, throw a dart and go, I'm gonna order this many yards. Yes, yes. And, and hope it sells. And that's, Part of the, the thing I really like about Maywood is that they show everything on fabric. Mm -hmm. So that yes. means when you look at it, and what that means is you can show it on either paper so or you can show it on fabric. She's talking about showing fabric to the buyers. So they bring in our, we have salespeople, they come in and they bring in these samples. Some of them bring us samples on paper which means they haven't committed yet to the run of the fabric. Mm -hmm. What Monique is saying is that Maywood has committed to the run of the fabric. We've already got fabric samples. And I got to tell you, it's much easier to buy fabric on fabric than it is to buy fabric on paper. Yes, anyway. it is. And, and it's easier for me too, because I look at it, we're all very tactile. We sure. love to touch our fabric. That's so part if, of it, yes. Yeah, so if you're looking at paper, you're just kind of like, oh yeah, that's probably gonna be nice. The colors are different, the feel is different. And, Absolutely, yeah. and you can visualize the quilts much better when it's on fabric. Sure. Because that's what we work with. Well, and we if I'm buying it, I can go like this, yes. which is hard to do with a piece of paper. Right, exactly, <laughs> and you can compare, and make sure it all goes together. Yes. And you can even bring it around your shop and see mm -hmm. if you have anything else that goes True. with it. So that's really nice thing about me with studio is they do once they have this on fabric they're committed they are making this fabric line and that's great for a designer because then I know this is coming out and I do a lot of supporting quilts with it I sure. do block of the months I do lots of quilts because not only do I that's what we do we quilt but I also love my fabric line. Well, of course. So Why would you design it if you right. did not love it? That's right. That's right. So that's part of You're it. You're going to make only fabric. No, absolutely not. So okay. that's that's really how the process goes. It it takes a while, but it's well worth it. It is wow. uh, one of the best things that I've done. I love it. Okay. So. Well, that is cool. So this is the current line, out. Um, or was the batik out after or before this? The batik was out before. Okay. So, so coastal chic. Coastal Getaway. Coastal Getaway. It was Coastal Chic Batiks was last year. Yep. 
Coastal Getaway was this year, but they went together, which is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. And then those were the batiks. And then this is the print line. So this is a more, again, all of them from Maywood Studios and Monique Jacobs of Open Gate Quilts. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming and explaining this to us. Kind of cool. It is cool. A lot it's of work fun. goes into yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> So here we are, our good, better, best segment of the show. We're going to talk about free motion quilting. So this is something that a lot of people are just petrified and just think they absolutely can't do. I will tell you something. This is my philosophy for everything in life. If you think you can't do it, you're right. You have to think you can. Everything takes practice. You're never going to be perfect at something the first time around. So think you can try it. Don't think you can't do it. Think I can try it. Get in here and practice. Grab a panel. So this is a fall panel that we picked out and there's threads because I always bring my thread up to the top and I've done a little bit of stitching on this, but practice outlining stuff on a panel. Grab yourself a panel with some big designs and practice your free motion going around some of the bigger aspects of the panel. So for example, I have gone through and outlined all the staves on the barrel to give it a little bit of texture and that's my quilting. So if you're trying to free motion quilt like this, what you're gonna do is get cramped hands and you're gonna get a little bit of soreness up in your shoulders from trying to control everything and move smoothly. There are aids to help you do this. Here is one set of them. So this one is designed to use just like this. It's inexpensive. They're all of like four bucks, I think. These, they are from So Easy. Uh, they're called machine quilting finger grips and they grip right onto that fabric. So as you're moving, you don't have to go like this and be squinching on the fabric. You can just put your hands down and they will move that fabric along for you. So these are kind of easy to use, very similarly to gloves. If you've used machine quilting gloves, your hands get kind of hot and sweaty inside them. So they are not my preferred way uh, to do that, but they certainly work. So that's our good, and it's certainly cost-effective at $4. This is our better. It's this grippy foam, and it is called Grip and & Stitch, and it's from Clever Craft Tools. It has this grippy foam and then squishy foam on the top. So you hold them like this, the smaller in your right hand. I'm not sure why you have the smaller in your right hand, but those are the directions and we follow them. You put these down on your fabric, just rest your hands over them, and then these will move around like that. So this makes life easier. Your hands will not get sweaty using these, um, and you don't have to grip that fabric again. Now, this is the better. This, as far as I'm concerned, is the best. So this is Martelli. This is a Martelli gripper ring. It has the Martelli gripper uh, material on the back of it. It is heavy. Set that down on your fabric, rest your hands on the knobs, and go. So this, to me, is, is much easier. I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I'm using these, I can theoretically get some lumps and glumps going on in there. I have to be real careful how I place my hands so that I don't fold my fabric over. The same with these guys. With this, you get your fabric nice and stretched out, and it is never gonna fold in on itself in the center of this disc. So this comes in an 11 inch size, it comes in an eight inch size, um, it comes in a set with both of them. If you're gonna do micro stippling, you can use the smaller one and that gives you better control. The 11 inch size you can use in pretty much any machine. You just have to be aware of where the outside edge is so you're not gonna hit the inside of your sewing machine. It has this neat little dude right here where your foot slides over so you don't have to take your foot off to get that on and off of your quilt sandwich. And as far as I'm concerned, this just makes life really easy, this guy. The weight holds everything down really well. It grips the fabric well and it moves it all in one piece. So again, we have good very inexpensive. It will work. You may have to work a little harder at it, but it will work. All of $4. Um, you have better. Uh, again, this is the grip and stitch. The first was machine quilting finger grips from So Easy. This is Clever Craft Tools. This is the grip and stitch. There are two little foam pads. These are 32. Not bad. And then your Martelli, your set of Martelli rings runs about 120 for the pair of them. So as far as I'm concerned, these are the best 
but any of them will work. That's our tool tip for today. So howdy everybody, it's time for our tip of the week. So last week we talked about needles and using the right needle, the right type and size of needle for this thread that you're using. So we're gonna talk a little bit about thread. What I have right here is all Aurifil thread. So that's primarily what we sell. We sell Aurifil at the quilt shop, Quilting in the Valley. Um, there's tons of other types of thread out on the market. And actually there's tons of other types of Aurifil threads available, weights and sizes as well. Um, there's embroidery thread. You can use Aurifil for embroidery, but there's embroidery thread, which is a whole different category. But we're gonna just kind of talk about the different sizes of Aurifil that we have right here and what you would use them for. If you are using thread that your great grandma left to you in her will and it's on wooden spools and it's cotton, please stop. <laughs> so it's got thread rot. You do not want to use that. So cotton thread will rot on the spool. It's the nature of the beast. It is a natural fiber. It will rot and it will cause you all kinds of thread breaking and tension issues in your machine. So don't use that stuff. Um, make sure you're rotating your thread so you have fresh thread at all the time. So including Aurifil. So anyway, what I have here, a lot of people don't know, but Aurifil makes polyester thread as well as cotton thread. This is Aurifil polyester, and this is a variegated Aurifil polyester. We use it on the long arm. This is a, let's see, what do we got? 3,300 yards on this spool. This is 100% polyester, and this particular thing was made in Germany. So uh, they do not make this at the Aurifil factory in Italy. This is made in Germany for them but it's made to their specifications. So it is a 50 weight thread. It's a very fine thread, but it's a poly, so it doesn't break that easily. On the bottom of the spool, it pops out, and then you can pop that spool cover closed, and then you don't have all this thread catching together in your box. So with this thread, you would use a 70, 75, at biggest, an 80 quilting needle, because this is for quilting. This is not for piecing, this is for quilting. Uh, again, you would use a, a 70-10, a 75-11, or an 80-12 needle at most for this, and you would use a quilting needle. A quilting needle has a, a more oval eye, which allows for the thread to move from side to side as you free motion instead of just straight forward and back. This thread, an Aurifil thread, is color-coded. So this thread right here is on the yellow cone. This is a relatively new thread for Aurifil. This is 100% cotton. This is three-ply, 40-weight cotton, which is designed to be used on long-arm quilting machines. So it's a 40-weight. You're going to use either an 8012 or better a 9014 needle with this. And again, you're going to use a quilting needle so that you can go from side to side. Um, this again is 40 weight, and it's three ply. So the three ply, and you can tell that on all the spools of thread that you buy, they'll say if they're two ply, three ply, however many, that's how many strands of fibers are wrapped together to make the individual piece of thread. So this is three strands wrapped together to make one string of thread. Can you have a string of thread? You know what I mean. Okay, this one is Aurifil 50 weight, 100% cotton, this is a two ply. Now, news to everybody, I use this on the long arm all the time. I just use a smaller needle. So I use this with a 7511 or an 8012. I have good luck with an 8012 with uh, 50 weight on my long arm. But anyway, um, this is great to use if you don't want the quilting to be the main thing you're looking at. Um, the heavier thread, the quilting is going to stand out more. The finer the thread, the quilting is going to recede more, and you'll see your fabric. So it depends on what you're quilting. Do you want the quilting to stand out, or do you want the pattern of the fabric and the piecing to stand out? Depends on what you want. Uh, but I use this all the time when I'm doing overalls, edge-to-edge -edge pantographs, that kind of thing. I use this, and it is a 50-weight two-ply. One thing you should know about Aurifil, and I see people saying that, you know, the, their cotton thread is so linty. All cotton thread's gonna be linty. It's cotton. Um, it's basically made of small fibers. I mean, it's gonna be linty. Um, however, Aurifil, if you look 
in, and you probably can't see that on the camera, but if you were to be able to get real close in on that, you would see no lumps or glumps on there. If you were to pull out an inferior quality cotton thread and lay it out on a table next to some Aurifil thread, you would see literally like little knots up and down the thread where it would catch in your needle and shed more lint. Um, this will not do that. And the reason this won't do that is because before they put it on the spool, they actually run it through an open flame in a cabinet to burn the lint off. How cool is that? Way cool. So anyway, this is a cone or a fill thread 50 weight. 7511 or an 8012 at the biggest. Quilting needle, if you're going to use it for quilting, if you're using this for piecing, put it on a thread stand, bring it up to the top of your machine, then thread, and again, 7511 or an 8012 needle at the most. Microtex if you're piecing. Let's talk about the small spools. A lot of you don't know that or fill thread for the small spools, or this is actually the medium sized spool. Um, the bottom just pops off and that's where your starting thread is always located underneath this cap. So if you have trouble finding your start thread to get your spool started, just pop that cap off, pull your thread out, pop the cap back on, and there you go, you're ready to go. Or if you get a nick in the top and it's catching when your thread's unspooling, pop the cap off, put it on the other side, and pull from this side. So it's very forgiving that way. The green, which is what I'm holding, the green spool, is Aurifil 40 weight two ply. 40 weight two ply. So this was 40 weight three ply on the yellow. This is 40 weight two ply on the green. This is not great for your long arms because you want a little more strength um, for your long arms than this. You can use it and I have used it. Um, smaller needle than this one, but you can use it. Again, sent through the cabinet with the open flame to burn the lint off. What do you want to use 40 weight thread for? It's great for garment construction if you're using all cotton fabrics. It is great for top stitching. Um, you can use this for embroidery. It actually makes a very low sheen, um, interesting look for embroidery. Final one. The orange spool is 50 weight Aurifil two ply cotton. You can see how nice and smooth that is. You're not gonna feel any lumps or glumps on this. This is perfect for piecing. So you're gonna use this with a 7511, 7010, at most an 8012 Microtex needle for your piecing. And then when you go to press your seams open, you're gonna get a really nice flat seam because this is such fine thread, it just sinks into the seam. Uh, you wouldn't think it, but if you're doing, say, a Bonnie Hunter quilt, where you have a lot of seam intersections, if you're losing 1 32nd of an inch in a seam, for every seam times 45 seams in the course of one of those quilts, it makes a huge difference in the size and whether or not all your pieces fit together in the end. So this is great thread for piecing with. It is 100% cotton, so you will get some lint off of it because it's cotton, it's nature of the beast. Uh, but it is a very, very nice thread to stitch with. Again, if your machine doesn't like it, that's because you have the wrong needle in. 7010, 7511, or an 8012 at the most size needle, use a Microtex and you'll be happy. That's your thread overview for today. Like I said, there's a lot of threads on the market. Look at the cap ends and look to see what the size is, what the ply is. It'll say on the cap ends, use the best thread you can afford. Don't use the old stuff grandma left you. It's no good anymore. Get rid of it. And happy stitching. We'll see you next week.